This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, the 19th of February. James Spann, uh, very balmy conditions across the state today. The chance of severe storms tomorrow night. We will answer your questions. If you ride along with us here, we'll look out the window, see where we stand today. These are Skycam shots. First off, coming from Inverness in Shelby County. It's cloudy and very mild. There's our Skycam in downtown Jasper from the King Building. Overcast conditions there and a cloudy day on the Alabama Gulf Coast. That's a view coming from the Phoenix All Suites down at Gulf Shores. We're watching that wave in the northwest United States. That's going to dig down into the Great Plains tomorrow and help in the development of severe storms that will ultimately affect us tomorrow night. Hey, look at Montgomery, 78. You got to like that. Auburn, 72. Shelby County Airport, 71. Uh, the GFS tomorrow printing a high of 75 for Birmingham. If we hit that, that will be within three degrees of the record high for the 20th of February. And around the nation, the big thaw continues. Temperatures are as warm as they have been across the lower 48 in quite a while. On a watch warning map, uh, still some winter weather problems up north. Blizzard warnings, parts of Iowa and Minnesota. Uh, winter storm warnings north of that zone. Flash flood watches up for parts of Illinois and Indiana. As the uh, smorgasbord of weather continues, severe weather possibilities for the rest of today and tonight. The standard slight risk of severe weather uh, from Kansas City down to about Tulsa. That would include Wichita. But, of course, this is what interests us, a large slight risk. That is the standard severe weather risk running from near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Atmore, Alabama, to Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus, Ohio. That covers much of Alabama except for areas around Dothan and Mobile. This is the latest uh, probabilistic outlook for tomorrow, and you can see the higher severe weather percentages are across the northwestern part of the state, roughly along and north of I-59. That is where we'll have the higher or the better combination of dynamic support, moisture instability. We note that hatched area uh, that's been added over parts of northwest Tennessee and uh, western Kentucky. That's where some significant severe weather could occur. Uh, and again, the main threat is going to be strong, damaging straight-line winds, as you'll see. We'll take a very close-up look at this in just a second. And then on uh, day three, which is Friday, the risk expands eastward, runs all the way from Panama City up through places like Macon, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina, all the way up to the Jersey Shore. And uh, then it sweeps off the Atlantic coast by Friday night. Let's look at the modeling. This is the GFS, the 12Z run, valid at noon tomorrow. This is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up. There's the big trough in the plains. Down below that, the attendant surface low is located southeast of Des Moines, 985 millibars, with a trailing front down through Little Rock toward Houston. And obviously, uh, with warm, unstable air in advance of that, that is of concern for a severe weather set up and then that big squall line develops this is uh, midnight tomorrow night a 973 millibar low that's northwest of green bay wisconsin with a trailing front down through uh, memphis and uh, lake charles let's talk about what's going to happen in terms of the timing this is the high resolution nam north american mesoscale run this run a tad slower not by much uh, uh, it's got the line coming through tuscaloosa birmingham uh, near Gadsden at 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Other runs have had it coming through these cities about 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, th that line will likely enter northwest Alabama about 6 o'clock and then move steadily southeast. And you can see it's clearly a linear, a linear event. And traditionally, with a line like that, you don't really have a very high tornado threat. Could there be a tornado in that line? Yes, but the clear risk is from strong straight-line wind gusts, maybe enough to knock down trees and power lines in spots. Let's look at the severe weather parameters. First off, the instability. This is the surface-based Cape at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Pretty good tongue of instability, uh, 750 joules or a bit more coming up through West Alabama. And again, that's not overwhelming, but you don't need overwhelming Cape values for severe weather here in the cool season. That is certainly adequate for severe storms. Uh, the low-level bulk shear values are not that impressive, and that's a good thing. That's one of the reasons I really don't expect a big problem with tornadoes. Could there be one? Yes. Please understand, there could be one, but uh, those shear values have been steadily coming down 
Another good thing, the wind speeds are coming down a little bit. Uh, this is the low-level jet, and it's got the core of the higher winds north of Alabama, up through uh, Tennessee and Kentucky and Ohio. Still, uh, certainly sufficient dynamic support for some severe weather, but again, it's good to see those wind speeds coming down ever so slightly. Here's the Energy Helicity Index, values between 1 and 2 in advance of the line. That's significant. And the sounding. Uh, we'd like to look at these. This is the forecast sounding for 9 o'clock tomorrow night at Birmingham. And uh, it, it's got uh, the winds at 850 millibars, about uh, 40 to 50 knots. So, again, they've come down a little bit. And, again, that's uh, that's a good thing. And, and the veering of the wind down there in the lower levels not overwhelming. So no major change in our thinking. A line of strong to severe storms tomorrow night. The main threat, strong, maybe damaging straight-line winds. An isolated tornado cannot be ruled out if there are any breaks in that line. And uh, it'll begin up in northwest Alabama about 6 o'clock, be coming through Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Gadsden around 10, and everything will be out of here by midnight, at least our part of the state. Friday, sky becomes mostly sunny in the wake of the line of storms, a bit cooler. The high will be around 60. Should be a nice day. Saturday, beautiful day to start the weekend. We'll start the day in the 30s. Very uh, mild. In fact, the uh, GFS is warmer now. It's printing a high of 70 in Birmingham on Saturday. That'll be a really, really nice day to do anything outdoors. And Sunday, we're finally getting some consistency in the models. The uh, little wave in the Gulf could bring some rain, mainly to South Alabama. Uh, and we're going to leave that in the forecast, a chance of rain, especially below Montgomery uh, for Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden. Uh, you know, some increasing clouds. Could there be a sprinkle somewhere? Yes, but at the moment we're thinking the better chance of rain will stay down south and the high Sunday will be in the 60s. Monday that wave is on by. The day will be dry, high in the lower 60s. Tuesday, same thing, lots of sun, low 60s. And here's Wednesday. The trough begins to rebuild over the eastern part of the nation. You can see colder air advecting in with north winds. The yeah, 540 line down to Birmingham. We've seen other runs colder than this, and I really do think uh, the high will drop into the 40s on Wednesday, and we'll play that in the forecast, but it looks dry. All right, let's go into March. What do you say? This is March 3rd. A little wave coming along in the Gulf. That looks wet. Maybe some snow for uh, up north of Nashville up into Kentucky, if this is right. Into the forecast on March 7th. That kind of looks like a severe look there with the trough in the southwest. Uh, surface low developing in the Texas panhandle. The Gulf of Mexico wide open. And as you know, March tends to be wet and stormy. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless.